Mr. Knapper. Thank you, Chairman Menendez, Ranking Member Risch, distinguished members of this committee, for the opportunity today to appear before you. I am honored in the faith that President Biden and Secretary Blinken have placed in me. I also want to express my deep love and gratitude to my wife, Suzuko, and our son, Alex, for their support and their sacrifice. They have repeatedly changed homes and schools and have been distant from family and friends so that we could serve the United States overseas. Without them, as well as my parents, Jay and Yolanda Saltzman, I would not be here today. The United States-Vietnam <laughs> relationship has undergone a profound transformation since the normalization of diplomatic relations 26 years ago. And my own family history tracks the arc of our relationship with Vietnam. My late father, Marine Colonel Roger Knapper, was a decorated Vietnam combat veteran who often recounted difficult memories from his time at war. Yet he also talked many times of his earnest wish to return to Vietnam and see that beautiful country at peace and thriving. This wish was fulfilled three times during my previous service at our embassy in Hanoi. And although he will not make it back for a fourth visit, we will always be grateful for the efforts and sacrifices he and millions of other Americans have made during our long journey with Vietnam. Our two countries have moved from a history of conflict to a comprehensive partnership that spans political, security, economic, and people-to-people -people ties, developing the U.S.-Vietnam relationship across a wide range of shared interests in four key areas. First, security. Our two countries have significantly expanded our security cooperation, including through U.S. support to strengthen Vietnam's maritime capabilities. The U.S. and Vietnam share an interest in upholding international law and resisting China's provocative behavior in the South China Sea and Mekong region. And if confirmed, I will make every effort to deepen our cooperation in this area. Second, trade and investment. Bilateral trade with Vietnam has grown significantly, increasing from nearly nothing in 1995 to more than $90 billion in 2020, benefiting American manufacturers, farmers, and ranchers, as well as consumers. But despite this growth, challenges remain. And if confirmed, I will advocate for a level playing field for U.S. companies and investors including by urging Vietnam to maintain equitable market access for U.S. digital services and agricultural products. Third, war legacy and humanitarian issues. If confirmed, providing the fullest possible accounting for U.S. personnel missing from the Vietnam War era will be my solemn duty. Furthermore, for decades, Vietnam has provided critical assistance to those efforts, and we're grateful. Since 1993, the U.S. has also contributed more than $160 million <coughs> to mitigate lingering threats posed by unexploded ordnance. And together with Vietnam, we have successfully completed the remediation of dioxin contamination in Da Nang. And in 2019, we broke ground on another project to remediate dioxin at Bien Hoa Air Base. Our cooperation on these issues, as well as providing $125 million since 1989 in humanitarian assistance, supporting over a million persons with disabilities, regardless of the cause, has been an important foundation for our bilateral relationship. Fourth and finally, people-to-people -people ties. The bonds between the American and Vietnamese people are strong and growing. Prior to the pandemic, nearly 700,000 Americans traveled to Vietnam annually, including more than 1,200 American students. And here in the U.S., we welcome 30,000 Vietnamese students each year. These people-to-people -people ties are an important bridge between our two countries. All that said, our thriving relationship is not without its challenges. We remain deeply concerned about Vietnam's human rights record, in particular, reports of the troubling trend of harassment, arbitrary or unlawful arrests, unjust convictions, and harsh sentences of journalists and activists. If confirmed, I will press the government of Vietnam to respect the freedoms of expression, association, peaceful assembly, and religion and belief. Only when we see significant progress on human rights can our two countries' partnership reach its full potential. And as always, my number one priority will be protecting the safety and welfare of all United States citizens in Vietnam. And I will also make the safety and welfare of Mission Vietnam personnel a top priority. The thriving U.S.-Vietnam partnership is the result of the courage, goodwill, and painstaking work of dedicated people in both countries who believed in the possibility of peace and reconciliation between two former enemies. Our overarching goal remains to advance American interests and support the development of a strong, prosperous, and independent Vietnam that contributes to international security and respects human rights and the rule of law. Thank you for considering my nomination. I look forward to your questions.